The Pac-12 released its preseason all-conference teams, and the Sun Devils were not well represented. Let's talk about it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And if you have not already, hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications wherever you're getting your podcasts. And if you want to stay in touch with that content, you can follow me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. All right. Guys, the the all the the, the preseason all Pac-12 conference teams have been released. A whopping zero Sun Devils made first team or second team. And I have a problem with it, and you should too. This is just so frustrating for a variety of reasons, but we'll start with this. Arizona State is not expected to be a good football team this year. And because of that, people are going to assume that there's not a lot of good football players on this team. And people aren't going to watch Arizona State Sun Devils football that much. When you take that into account, this turns into a very politically driven kind of list. Now we want this list to be littered with the teams that are going to be good, which is why USC has a million guys, why Oregon and why Washington and Utah are so well represented. Are they talented? Of course they're talented. I'm not trying to tell you that USC doesn't have a large handful of kids that are some of the best kids in the, in the conference. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is you're going to hype some of them up a lot more than you're going to hype some of the players at Arizona State up. I think a really good example, and he didn't make a a first or second team, but as we're talking about, a lot of people are hyping up Mario Williams at USC. And I do like Mario Williams, but I like Elijah Badger more. And you're not going to hear people talk about Elijah Badger the same way that people are going to talk about Mario Williams. It's It's just part of that political aspect of college football where you talk about the teams that are good, and not so much the teams that are bad. And because Arizona State is expected to be bad, this is this is just going to be the situation that we find ourselves in, is this is not going to be a program that's going to get a lot of hype. It's not going to be a program that's going to get a lot of attention and notoriety. And because of that, some of the players are going to suffer. Last year, Xavier Valade should have been the first team all Pac-12 running back, and he was not. They went with... I want to say Travis Dye and Zach Charbonnet, I believe. But they also had uh, Damian Martinez was there as well. The The point is, Valade didn't get there. And if ASU even doubled its wins to be 6-6 six and six and they were, they were a bowl-eligible team, maybe Valade would have gotten more attention for a dude who led the conference in touchdowns and was top five in rushing yards. Don't know how that happens outside of the fact that it's a bad team. So we're going to, we're going to punish them. It's just the way it goes. So we're looking at a very similar situation for the Sun Devils entering the 2023 season as we look and there's just not enough representation from Arizona state. I mean, there's, there's literally none. There's literally no representation for Arizona state on the first team or second team. Both sides of the football, sure, there's a couple honorable mentions. I think there's four. There are four honorable mentions, and those four are running back Cameron Scadaboo, tight end Jalen Conyers, defensive back Roe Torrance, and special teams long snapper Slater Zellers. Those are the four Sun Devils that they're highlighting as their, as their honorable mentions. They didn't even have Elijah Badger in there. Keep in mind, Badger was a honorable mention on the 2022 team. So why are you going into this year with even less hype around him? Like, I 
just don't understand it, especially because one of the wide receivers they have there is Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter is a corner for for Colorado. Like, sure, he's a two way player, but you you literally are sliding a number one wide receiver for a corner at 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 the wide receiver spot. What are we doing here? It's frustrating. So as far as the honorable mentions go, like, cool, I guess. Like, it doesn't mean that much to me. Like, I'm, I'm happy that Cameron Scadaboo is going to be on radars because he is going to be a very good running back this year. We're hoping that it can be three in a row for turning out some really good uh, transfer running backs and getting the production out of them. We're hoping Scadaboo is the next guy. Jalen Conyers is very obvious. The the best player on this team, more than likely one of the best tight ends in the conference, potentially one of the best tight ends in the country. We'll talk a little bit more about him in just a second. Defensive back row Torrance. He's great. If you watch Arizona state, some of football, you either know exactly who he is, or you have no idea who he is. If you don't know who he is, it's because you don't hear his name called because people don't throw at him. If you do know who he is, it's because you listen to, People like me and other podcasts, and you read articles that talk about how good he is. So if you don't know who Roe Torrance is, it's a good thing you don't, because people don't throw at him. He's a very good corner. He's got an NFL future, I believe. And then Slater Zellers is a long snapper. I don't know how much he's going to contribute on the team. I, I'm, I'm hoping that he ends up being one of the top long snappers in the country. I obviously... I have not done any scouting homework at the long snapping spot. I certainly hope that he lives up to the hype. But outside of those four, not a lot of representation anywhere else. I think there's a small handful of guys that you should have brought up as well, with Elijah Badger being probably the most key component there that I am honestly like stunned was not brought up there. But, you know, Neither here nor there, I suppose. This is just, like I said, part of the political aspect that you have run into with college football lately. Take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet and bonus bets up to $200. That's right. You just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run all in an app. That's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you guys as always for tuning in. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on those notifications as we get Closer and closer to training camp started, we're going to be taking a look at some training camp battles. You guys won't want to miss it. Let's talk a little more specifically about the three biggest snubs here. And it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody who listens to this podcast who I think the three biggest snubs here on this list. It's Elijah Badger, it's Jalen Conyers, and it's Ro Torrance. We'll start with Badger. Now, unfortunately for Badger, he is going into a very, very good conference with wide receiver play. Because looking at the guys listed ahead of him, it's it's very difficult to definitively say Badger is better than those guys. Uh, Romeo Adunze or Ro- Rome? Rome Adunze? Rome Adunze is the best wide receiver in this conference, hands down. He is going to be a first-round pick in the 2024 draft. Washington has a guy who should end up being a Bolitnikoff finalist if he continues to play the way he did last year. Dorian Singer transferred from Arizona to USC. They're going to be hoping he's Jordan Addison again and hopefully a healthier version of Jordan Addison. And he's the number one receiver in USC, and he's catching passes from Caleb Williams. Yeah, no complaints for the top two spots there. No complaints at all. Second team, Jalen McMillan, who is the wide receiver at Washington across from Rome, from Roma Dunze. 
He's also very, very good. He is also going to be a thousand yard receiver. I haven't seen first round hype for him, but I'm sure that he can generate some conversation for himself. He also might not be eligible. I'm not hundred percent sure. Jacob Callie at Arizona. I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. I suppose Jacob Callie's a good wide receiver. Makes sense why he's on second team. I understand it. The other wide receivers, you got T McMillan, the other Arizona kid, five-star prospect. Everyone loves him. We'll see. Jeremiah Hunter at California. I honestly couldn't tell you anything about him, so I won't slander him at all. Travis Hunter, I already ranted about him. He is a two-way player, no doubt. But he is a corner, and he's going to be a corner through and through. So don't list him there. And then Troy Frank, Troy Franklin at Oregon. I feel like this is probably the guy who should have been either first team ahead of Dorian Singer or at, at, at worst, the second team. I don't understand why he is a, an honorable mention. Besides that, though, you make an argument that Elijah Badger is is right behind Franklin. I think you would take the both Washington kids. I think you would take... Troy Franklin, and I think you would take Dorian Singer. After that, I think I think Badger stacks up with just about any other receiver in the conference. There's not as many guys as they're listing here that are better than Elijah Badger. They there just aren't. The body control is terrific with him. He's a natural hands catcher. He's a good route runner. He is a true number one receiver. And yet you have two guys who are the number two receivers on their team. And you have a two-way player who is mainly a defender ahead of him on this list. That's, that's asinine. I am like very upset about that. That is so frustrating. And I hope that this ends up being bulletin board material for Elijah Badger. Tight end, Jalen Conyers. Listen, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good conference of tight ends. You got Benjamin Urasek is and uh, and Brent Keithy. Keithy was uh, the the first team, and Urasek is the second team. I get it, I do. Brent Keithy is going into his 14th season at Utah. It feels like, in reality, he's going into six. So it's not like I'm that far off. He is going into his sixth season at Utah. That's a ton. And then Benjamin Urasek. He's been a stud the last two years. His production really dipped last year. He was under 10 yards a catch. Meanwhile, Jalen Conyers is the best tight end in this conference. I don't think it's close. What he did in the second half of the season was just so much further and farther away, better than anything else that was going on at the position. In, in the entire conference, he was just that much better than everybody else. He was one of the best tight ends in the nation, the way he was playing last year. How he's not even second team is beyond me. How he's not first team bugs me. He's going to absolutely make those, make those people pay who did not vote for him. Finally, Roe Torrance is the last guy I wanted to mention. I... I do not know enough about all of the corners in the Pac-12. What I do know is there's some really good defensive backs in the Pac-12. Cole Bishop, Kalen Bullock, safeties, but very, very good safeties in the Pac-12 for Utah and USC, respectively. Travis Hunter's transferring in from Colorado. He was the former number one prospect in the nation when he played with Dion at... Jackson State. Totally get it. Will not be upset that he is listed as a first team at all. Outside of them, I'm I'm just not educated enough to say definitively that Ro Torrance is better than uh, B, C, and D players. I'm just not. W- what I will say is Ro Torrance is a very, very, very good corner who looks like an NFL player, who plays like an NFL player, and he's going to end up being one of the best defenders in the conference. As long as he is able to 
take a step forward from where he was last year, he's going to be very, very good. He's just so long and he moves really well to mirror and match with receivers. If he can get like the, the ball production up, not even so much interceptions, but the breakups and all that good stuff, it'll be really hard to not talk about him as one of the top defensive backs in the conference. So bottom line, when I'm looking at Roe Torrance here, this is, this is definitely a dude that I feel like is being slept on currently. I can understand why. And again, I'm not, I'm not furious the way I am with Badger and Conyers that Torrance didn't make a first or second team. I think it makes more sense that he didn't compare to those guys, but nonetheless, I feel like there's just not enough buzz respect or whatever have you that is going into the direction of Roe Torrance going into the 2023 season. I think that a lot of people are going to be in for a rude awakening when he turns out to be an absolute monster this year. Thank you guys again, as always for tuning in wherever you get your podcast, hit like subscribe, turn on notifications. We are this close to getting the training camp and you guys want to make sure that you're staying in touch with everything because I'll be at all the practices that I can be at. So make sure that you hit like subscribe on the podcast as I give you guys all the breakdowns, who looked good, who looked bad. And then we'll talk about, you know, some, some camp battles coming up as well. So don't want to miss out on the best levels coverage there is final overall thoughts here. So if there's anything I would change, if there's anything I would change here, I would make Jalen Conyers a first team. I would make Brant Keithy the second team, and I would make Benjamin Eurosec the honorable mention. I would probably keep Roe Torrance as an honorable mention simply because, I, like I said, I'm just not educated enough to say he's better than Katan Oladapo at Oregon State. I don't know enough about Katan Oladapo. I could be speaking out of my you-know-what and say that. So uh, I'll keep Roe Torrance as an honorable mention. Just keep an eye on him, I suppose. Elijah Badger, he just needs to be mentioned, period. The fact that he's not even an honorable mention is beyond me. So you can put him there. Again, I think he's probably the fifth or sixth receiver in this conference behind the two Washington kids, Dorian Singer and Troy Franklin. I think you put him behind those four. He's probably that fifth guy, maybe the sixth guy, depending on what what uh, Jacob Cowing does at Arizona or T. McMillan or any of the other dudes that they mentioned, Mario Williams, whatever. Lots of guys. I like Cameron Scadaboo as an honorable mention. I actually don't know if I would have put him there myself, so happy to see he's there for sure. No complaints. Slater Zellers, really cool that he's on the special teams. I would also want to monitor Dario Longhetto, who's one of the more veteran kickers in the conference and was kicking it at uh, California previously. I'm not saying he's going to be great. He's He is just somebody to monitor more than anything. Just because he's a veteran guy and it, it's, it's just worth monitoring, I suppose. But, but again, I don't, I don't know enough about all the kickers in the conference to tell you like, oh, they totally, they totally did this. You know, I just can't do that. Um, same with our punter, whose name is totally escaping me at the moment, transferring in from New Mexico. He was one of the top punters at his level of competition. He's coming to Arizona State. That's going to make me upset that I can't remember his name. But he's he's another guy I feel like we should probably monitor. Return specialist, I I want to throw in Javen Jacobs' name. I'm a very big Javen Jacobs fan. He showed off some ability. Josh Carlson is who I was thinking of, the punter. Josh Carlson. I knew it was going to come to me. But anyway, so Javen Jacobs, he showed off some intrigue as a return man last year in a handful of attempts. He's going to get some opportunities in the run game and in the passing game this year as kind of like their do-it-all running back kind of option. He's somebody that I would also monitor for these teams, especially if he turns into like an all-purpose kind of monster. He feels like somebody that would be a really good fit here. As much as I want to throw a quarterback on here, it's, the conference is just too good, man. There's just too many good quarterbacks. Caleb Williams, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, 
Cam Ward, uh, Cam Rising. There, there's, there is such an abundance of talent at the quarterback spot that, as of right now, I just don't know that you can put any Arizona State Sun Level in an All Pac-12 team when there's three spots and then the honorable mention, right? I just don't know that Arizona State has a top three quarterback in the Pac-12 as of this moment right now. Love to be wrong. Linebacker, I I would like to throw Trey Brown in there. And then on the defensive line, I think B.J. Green deserves to be in there as well because Green is going to be an absolute sack machine. But Trey Brown's absence kind of surprises me a little bit because he was a very good player for Washington State last year, and he's coming to Arizona State as number one linebacker. B.J. Green, I understand. Nobody knows who he is. People are going to know who he is by the end of the season, though. Those are the guys I would add. Those are the changes I would make. Those are my thoughts on the preseason All-Pac-12 team. What do you guys think? Who was the biggest snub for you guys? Who's somebody that you want to see on there? Who's somebody that I didn't talk about that you think needs to be talked about more? Let me know in the comments on YouTube. Or hit me up on Twitter at RichieBrads36 or the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. That's all that I have for you guys on today's edition of the podcast. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Wherever you get your podcast, make sure that you hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That's all that we got today, guys. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked On.